journalists who had become very prominent in the United States all covered D-Day. Edward R. Morrow, Walter Cronkite, Larry Lesseur, Andy Rooney, Ernest Hemingway, and Cornelius Ryan, who wrote The Longest Day. So there's a natural affinity between the town of Bayer and the OPC. We're both identified with war correspondents. Bayer supports journalists with the Prix de Bayer and your memorial garden. Many of those journalists who were recently killed are now written on your wall. A most important prize in photojournalism is the Robert Kappa Gold Medal Award, which the OPC gives out every year. It's for exceptional courage and enterprise. So we're so privileged tonight to have Robert Kappa's photo editor, John Morris, whose book we're launching this evening, Somewhere in France. They said at the time that one was a coward to leave London for the front in Normandy. That was a joke, of course, but it, it, it enabled me to tell my wife, who was looking after two babies in New York, that I had a reason to go to Normandy. However, the true reason was that I wanted to share the experience of the photographers whom I had been working with for years. Je suis arrivé à Utah Beach uh, avec, uh, uh, on board a, 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 an LST. <laughs> Avant, j'étais à, à Londres pour, pour, pour huit mois pendant les, uh, the, the air raids on, on London, uh, the big air raids on London. Oui. Um, but in Normandy, the four weeks I was in Normandy, I was shot at personally uh, once. Um, I, 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 it's a miracle I was not killed on the 25th of July because I was supposed to work that day with an, uh, an AP photographer named a Bede Irvin who was killed uh, along with 125 other Americans uh, in, the, in the bombardment of, which fell short of, of, of uh, saint Lou. It, 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 it was always my privilege to work with some of the greatest photographers of the 20th century. Um, my colleagues, for example, Henri Cartier-Bresson, Robert Capa, of course, for the last 15 years of his life, uh, the photographers of life, who included Margaret Bourke White, Alfred Eisenstadt, and many others. Uh, my job was really to either supervise them or assist them. I, I decided to take a camera with me when I came to Normandy, to, as, as I say, to share their lives, because I thought I might be in a situation where there was no, I had, had no, no colleague and I, I could photograph it myself. I had only a Rolleiflex camera. And, and about 12 rolls of film. The amazing thing about this book is that there are 50 pictures in the book, and I, 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 that's one third of the total I took in Normandy. It, I was very lucky in that nobody was telling me where to go or what to do. The procedure each day at the First Army press camp I spent only my first night at that hotel de Lyon d'Or. <laughs> but after that, I oh, moved. Trois étoiles après ça, cinq étoiles. <laughs> I then moved to the, the chateau at Vouy, uh, whose, whose owner is here to, tonight, uh, which was served as the first army press camp. Uh, jeeps were assigned to the journalists. Uh, the custom was for two, two journalists to, to go in, in one Jeep every day, and based at the First Army press camp, that's how we would go out. The, the idea was that most journalists were there to, to report what was new, knew what had happened on that very day. I went, uh, accompanied Frank Churchill, a life photographer, to a, an aerial reconnaissance base uh, where uh, uh, they were flying reconnaissance to benefit 
uh, artillery spotters, I mean uh, uh, spotters for the artillery. And um, uh, I, uh, there was a plane there and I asked if I could go up with the artillery spotter and he said sure. So it was a strange sensation to ride over the front and see the, the bursts of gunfire here and there. Alors, quand, quand tu es arrivé, il y avait toujours la, la, les grandes batailles vers l'est, euh, aux régions de Caen. Oui. Euh, mais finalement, euh, tu as décidé, on, on a décidé que, que tu partais vers l'ouest, euh, direction euh, Bretagne, bon, Cherbourg d'abord, et puis Rennes. Et, et pourquoi cette décision Qui a pris cette décision d'aller dans cette direction You see, it, it was, there had to be... Uh, a, a, in a way, Eisenhower's forces had to stop and wait and as, reassemble uh, in order to drive on uh, east toward Germany. When Eisenhower did not want to ca capture Paris. He did not want a battle for Paris. And fortunately, uh, we were very lucky and there was no battle for Paris. But um, uh, I, at the time I came, it was kind of a a pause, but it was, there was still fierce combat. Um, Brittany was, a, was strange because uh, at Saint-Malo there was a German garrison uh, which was totally surrounded, but the, the commander, who I think was SS, refused to surrender. And I went with Bob Kappa to an observation point uh, as close as possible to the front. Uh, one could actually see the Germans without field glasses. And that was one day when I got shot at personally, uh, but it was a bit poor shot, so it was fine. <laughs> um, may I, may I t talk about the most amusing night of my life? <laughs> okay. Uh, Kappa and I, Kappa heard one day, uh, he came back to the First Army press camp, and he said, Mont Saint-Michel has been liberated that's a good place to go. So together we went to Mont Saint-Michel. We discovered Ernest Hemingway there already <laughs> with Bill Walton of Time Magazine and Larry Lasseur of CBS television, uh, Radio. A quand nous sommes arrivés à, à Mont Saint-Michel, uh, un paysan a dit à Kappa, qu'est-ce que, qu que je peux faire pour les Américains? Et Kappa a répondu, Peut-être dîner. <laughs> Say, après uh, le paysan a dit à Kappa, et Kappa a répondu, dîner, la femme de le, 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 le fermier, uh, 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 she, she, she cooked all day, all the next day, and that night, uh, Kappa and Hemingway and Walton and I, with the farmer on, us, on the side, went by jeep to the farmer's house. Uh, and it was a real feast, which lasted until midnight. I, I don't want to leave you with the impression that war is just fun. Uh, there are definitely <coughs> moments of fun in war. Uh, it's, uh, the Kappa was one to enjoy going to a bar and drinking when he wasn't covering war. But the one thing that worries me about covering war is that people will get the idea that it is heroic, which it is, but uh, I, I really worry about the effect of war pictures and whether they, they prolong people's feeling that war is, will, will last forever. Do you consider yourself a pacifist? I have always been against war. I'm also against Cold War. Il est, il s'est toujours considéré que, que, euh, un pacifiste, mais aussi il était contre la guerre froide. Et à, à, à ce moment, oui. pour le, le, la guerre le mondiale, oui. la même chose, un pacifiste. Uh, I, I, have, I have great concern about the, the present world situation. The crisis in the U Ukraine has been inflated beyond anything that was necessary to do. And uh, we must be sure that we don't go over the edge and start 
uh, another war. I don't think we will. Alors, comme pacifiste, tu étais d'accord qu'en ce cas-là, il fallait faire la guerre? I, I went along with, yes, I felt that war had to be won, and that's why I was, I was not happy to participate, but I, I felt it was my, it was, it was worthwhile to participate, of course. Um, it, I'd like to point out that the Great War of 1914 to 18 was entirely different. Very few civilians were killed. That was, while it was a terrible war, it was a war between armies and navies. Uh, it only became fashionable to kill civilians in World War II. Alors, mais pour retourner à, à Rennes, tu étais là pour la libération de Rennes. Et, oui, je suis arrivé à Rennes le 22 août. Uh, c'était libéré le, pendant la nuit. Et c'était un, un spectacle extraordinaire. Uh, j'ai entré le mairie, j'ai...